It feels like summertime because we're at America's National Park of Speed, one of the best locations, one of the best racetracks in the world, certainly in North America. It's Road America, and it's Indy Next by Firestone. With the NTT IndyCar Series coming up this afternoon, the top step of the ladder gets the center stage right now, and it is perfect. We had a lot of rain yesterday impacting the schedule. Wet qualifying in multiple series, but sunny and 72 here today in Wisconsin, and we are ready to go racing. Fans are gathered in all of the glorious locations, camping and enjoying the festivities this weekend, and it is festive. Kevin Lee, Charlie Kimball, ready to go. Why does everyone love this place so much? Well, it's beautiful. You talked about it being a national park of speed. There is a lot of grounds to cover. There's a long racetrack. You can see a lot of different corners. The food concessions are amazing. The views are great. Today it's a little windy, and I think these drivers are going to have to handle a little bit more wind than they expected. It's definitely blowing in from the north, northwest, and that'll catch them out in a couple of corners. It's serious business, too, because it is fast. Let's take a look at the 14 turns in the over four mile track here. Turn one is fast. You come around the corner downhill to turn three. This long run, heavy braking downhill into five. Turn six, up under the Corvette Bridge. Turn seven, almost full throttle. Down the hurry downs to another big braking in turn eight. The world famous carousel, long load, puts a punishment on those drivers and the Firestone tires. The kink in normal circumstances is flat out into kettle bottoms, down to Canada corner, also known as turn 12. Good braking can lead to trouble as you come through Thunder Valley, Bill Mitchell Bend, and then turn 14. That last corner leads onto the long uphill front straight here to the start finish line. And as we talked about, the National Park of Speed, the most beautiful racetrack we go to all year. And the grid is busy. Drivers are strapped in. And we welcome in down on the grid, DJ Clark. Well, Kevin, it is a day of history here, not only for Jamie Chadwick, who was able to put her number 28 Andretti Global Machine on pole position, but was also the first time in Indy Next history a woman has sat on the pole for a road or street course. It was a very, very close session for Jamie, barely edging out her teammate, Louis Foster, but there were high fives and a lot of smiles up and down the grid for Jamie. She was absolutely jubilant. It was fantastic. Fantastic, but she's going to have her work cut out for her here today because it's not just going to be all Jamie. She has got to be watching out for the big man with momentum. That is her teammate, Louis Foster, who starts to the outside of row one. It's going to be very, very tricky to hold the young Briton at bay. Yeah, he's been quick, and Louis Foster certainly has been coming on in the last few races. He was one of the championship contenders coming into the season and did not get off to a bad start, but he just wasn't getting first or second like Nolan Siegel and Jacob Abel were getting. But here in the last two, move from fourth to first in the second half of the doubleheader on the Indy Grand Prix weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and then controlled the entire way, Charlie, at Detroit. He really did. He managed that race, it finished under yellow, but no one had anything for Louis Foster in that Andretti Global car. His momentum really started in his fight back in race one for me at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He had contact, fell all the way to the back at a restart, was smart, moved his way forward, picked up a top 10 in that event. And then in race number two at the Indianapolis Grand Prix, came away with a win, carried that a couple weeks off for the Indy 500 to run into Detroit and picked up win number two. Let's look at how two of the Strong contenders shake up at this point. Jacob Abel and Louis Foster will explain why, for now, we're leaving off another member of that group. But Foster and Abel are not the only contenders, but certainly two of the key ones. And we are seeing a, a big run from Kyle Collette in fourth, chasing down those top three as well. Time to get the engines fired. Let's go down to the grid. Here to give the command to start engines, your Grand Marshal for the Indy Next by Firestone Grand Prix at Road America. Senior Vice President, Executive Operations, Global Medical Response, Randy Strozik. On behalf of the 35,000 team members at Global Medical Response and first responders across our nation, drivers, start your engines.
21 fired. One surprise starter that we'll explain in a moment. Let's see how they line up here today at Road America. Third female to win a poll. Pippa Mann, Sarah McEwen are the others. Jamie Chadwick is next, then Louis Foster. It's an Andretti Global Lockout on the front row. Row number two, a great qualifying for Josh Pearson. Inside row two, Jacob Abel, your championship points leader, outside row two. Reese Gold, Kyle Collette, two that are still in the mix for the championship, but a lot of people think they expect Collette to really move forward in the second half of the season. A lot of conversations about Kyle Collette. Inside a row four, Bryce Aaron recovering from that crash on the streets of Detroit. Callum Hedge coming off the podium in Detroit outside of row four. It's another reprieve for Michael D. Orlando. Last week at Detroit, he said, I will not be at Road America. He got the call on Wednesday. The Flat Rock Motorsports Andretti Cape car is going to start ninth. And Miles Rowe, who was dazzling, going from 19th to 4th at Detroit. These two have battled for USF championships. They start next to each other today. Inside of row six, you've been son of a the Wisconsin native, graduate of the University of Wisconsin. He's got one top 10 so far this year. And Jonathan Brown, outside of row six, is coming off a streak of 10, three top 10s, excuse me. Nolan Auer will start in row seven, in, and right next to Salvador de Alba Jr. They'll be in the 13th and 14th positions. Inside of row eight, Jordan Messick pulling double duty, racing the Radical Championships this weekend. Only his third Indy Next by Firestone event. Christian Vogel with over 50 Indy Next races under his belt. James Rowe should be quicker than this starting position. He admitted he made a mistake in qualifying, so he's back in 17th. And this is Kiko Porto who was here coaching this weekend. Nolan Siegel got an opportunity to run in the IndyCar race, was going to do both, and then yesterday morning decided to step out of the next car. Inside of row 10, Jack William Miller had a problem in qualifying, just like James Rowe, maybe a little faster than this starting spot shows. Niels Colin, we just rode on board there outside of row 10, and Lindsey Brewer inside of row 11. Really tough day yesterday, wet conditions to drying. Their qualifying was dry as we will go green the first time by here. So very challenging qualifying for these drivers. A real quick Kimball's Keys. Coming from the shortest track in Detroit to the longest track here at Road America, over four miles, they're gonna have to stretch their legs. And it's a huge championship weekend for some of these drivers with no Nolan Siegel. You talked about Nolan getting the car for the 78 car at the Indy Next, or Indy Car Series this weekend. We'll see what that does to shake up the championship. It is a bad, fast track with three long straightaways. The race begins heading up this hill, and this picture does not do it justice. It is steep. The crawl begins. Jamie Chadwick is in charge of the field. Louis Foster on the outside. Pearson, Abel, Gold, Colette, and others are lurking. Perfectly aligned, side by side. Let's go for Road America. Chadwick in the white car has the early jump. Foster will think about the outside in this long run down to turn one. We've seen a lot of incidents, a lot of drivers trying around the outside. Louis Foster committing to the outside. Is able to run wide though. Losing spots, losing momentum. Jamie Chadwick holds the point from Jacob Abel. Abel gets into second, side by side, further back. It's Michael D. Orlando in that black and gold Flat Rock Motorsports car. This is another great passing down into turn five. Can't do it in one or three. You think about turn five. They all make it through, and now we're side by side going into five. It's a great run out of turn three for Jamie Chadwick. They're still sorting themselves out, running side by side further back in the field. Chadwick, Abel, side by side with Golden Pearson, and Pearson is going to lose on out in that and lose out on one or two more spots, too. And Miles Rowe trying to send it around the outside. That is a brave maneuver in turn seven. So where's Louis Foster? He has slipped back a few positions. Chadwick won the battle in turn one. Jacob Abel picked up a couple of spots. So Foster is still lurking. He's right there in fourth, right behind Kyle Collette in that green and black car. He's got a great run here through the kink. This will be a long draft here. What a move. Louis Foster look to the inside. Collette covers, goes to the outside. This will be a right-hander coming up a, a long way around again here in Canada. Clears him. Did not make it work on the outside in turn one. Makes it stick in Canada corner. Turn 10, so Foster back up to third. 
Jamie Chadwick continues to lead, but second, third, and fourth are within the championship hunt, are first, second, and fourth place in the championship. And with Nolan Siegel driving the IndyCar this weekend, it's a big points day for these guys. Strong first lap for Jamie Chadwick, who had to think her fiercest contender was going to be her teammate. In qualifying yesterday, as Rowe and Pearson are going side by side, and Pearson is going to get a little bit of help going off there in that side by side fight. Callum Hedge trying to find a way past as they come back on and get up to speed. Because the straights are so long, these corners are so big, there's so much about yeah, we momentum. We still get the winner race. The guys ahead are very aggressive on their tires. You're very good, Josh. Keep pushing. Good job. Miles Rowe in the grass at 160 miles an hour down to turn five. Callum Hedge on Eubin Sundermorthy. That was the 14 car of Josh Pearson who has a different voice in his ear. Uh, for at least that moment, that was the pit stand, I think. And now we see Jordan Missick taking a ride through the grass. He'll get back on, but he'll lose some positions. And then Niels Colon is going to go off. Those momentum shifts, you have to be ready for that as a driver. And if you end up on the outside of turn seven, we saw Miles Rowe make it work on lap one. After that, there's just too much speed. What I started to say, and that's good that we have a lot of action, is that Jamie Foster had to be, uh, uh, Jamie Chadwick had to be concerned about the pace of teammate Louis Foster because conditions were better in group two when Chadwick went. They're in, on the same team. They know what they have. And Chadwick was able to win the pole. Foster might have been maybe a little bit quicker, but she was able to get it done in turn one. And this is the onboard for Niels Cole. And Jordan Messick comes back on. He misjudges how far he can get. Once you get on those rumble strips, those exit curves, it kind of sucks it off. You can see him kind of shaking his hand. It's a rough ride when you're out there. Jacob Abel's got a good run now on Chadwick. What does he do? Chadwick will defend down the inside, then take the line. No change here. But Abel is still in a position to take a look into turn five. Jacob Abel doing everything he can just to keep his car in the mirrors of Jamie Chadwick out front, put the pressure on. He spent a lot of time running P2, running out front. He knows what that looks like. Turn five's his next opportunity. I don't think he's close enough at the moment. But he will continue to pour that pressure on for the next 17 laps. Pearson and Sunworthy, and then further back, Jack William Miller with a big lockup trying to hang on to it, and he will. That is not going to be a comfortable ride for Jack Miller as he's trying to lean on Salvador Galba. With that left front squared off, tires do not work when they have big flat spots. It creates a big vibration and a lot of problems. And we've got a big crash here. That's Kiko Porto in the 39, normally driven by Nolan Siegel. And James Rowe in the top con car. Porto will continue, and Rowe will not. Maybe not major damage. Be out. Maybe if he can get pulled out of there, he can continue. We do go yellow. The AMR safety team will try and go and pull James Rowe out of the grass here so we can get rolling. Just take me out. Well, we needed a break because we had a lot happen there in two and a half laps. So let's see what happened. Getting a report that maybe there was some damage here. So there are like three things to watch there. So little, Okay, did he get clipped there? Uh, yeah, a little he bit did. of contact, so that breaks his front wing. So now he's a wounded car coming up the hill to turn six. That's a big move from the 14 car further look, up of Josh Pearson. Look how long Miller was in the grass. And he had already picked up six spots. He started in the back and was moved up. Uh, up to 13th, but he's locked up a couple of times. James Rowe not quite far enough along, hits his wing on the left rear of Salvador D'Alba. And, and then at the right next at the corner. back. Yeah, so because he's wounded, he doesn't have that front downforce, the front grip. Kiko Porto behind him in that 39 car, driving Indy next, replacing Nolan Siegel for this weekend. Nolan gets the, the call to race in the Indy cars. Maybe doesn't know that the 29 car is damaged. 
gets into the back of him, spins him around, takes them both off the track. Yeah, for Kiko Porto, he was uh, here, I presume, coaching. He often coaches in the USF championships. Uh, headed to the practice grid on Friday afternoon. Nolan Siegel was getting ready to strap into that number 39 car. He got the call and was asked if he would like to drive the number 78 Hunko's Hollinger car. And he said, uh, yeah, sure. Got in, started the practice. Uh, 10 laps or so in, they said, all right, it's time to get out. You need to go get a seat fit. So he comes literally running to the Hunko's Hollinger tents to get the seat fit. At the time, the plan was he would still do both. And I think they looked at the schedules, namely uh, three and a half hours in the car today with the warm up and so much inside. You know what, we'll just focus on the IndyCar weekend, and that's the only decision for now. They'll regroup after the weekend and decide what they are going to do. Certainly a big hit in the championship for Nolan Siegel. He came in third, but the opportunity was there to drive a pretty good car in IndyCar this weekend, stepping in for Augustine Canapino. And then here, this is something we do not see often. The nose cone is stuck in the wall. Looked like the front wing caught on that final barrier that goes in front of the tires to create kind of a seamless front. AMR safety team, best in the business, getting that out. And uh, you say regroup after this weekend for Nolan Siegel. There's not a whole lot of time because he's on an airplane tonight to France to go race at the Le Mans 24 hours That's next great weekend. Point. And he said, I've got some sort of driver thing tomorrow morning. I don't know if it's driver introductions or a driver's meeting. But I've got to do that in France on Monday, and then the week starts, and the race is Saturday, Sunday, and then he turns around, and depending on what his schedule is, if he's back in the 39 Indy next car, it's a double header, or back in the Indy car, one of the most physical tracks at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. It is all TBD as we see James Rowe coming in here at the moment. TBD on the Hunkos Hollander car. Uh, Augustine Canapino is sitting out the weekend, and that's the only information at this point. Uh, DJ, you're down there. Yes, I am, Kevin. The front wing is getting put on here at this point. Obviously going to save a little bit of time because they don't have to take that front wing off. But that's going to be a pretty quick change. No other damage looks like on the car. Front wing on, and James Rowe is back on his way. But he has lost a lap, correct? He is a lap yeah. down as has Kiko Porto. DJ, if you can find any information about why the 39 came in, if it was due to that contact with the 29 of James Rowe, you, know, you wouldn't want to come in here. Pit lane, you lose 45 seconds. It's a long pit lane. It's a long racetrack. But because of the incident and everything else. Well, he was in the back, right? So it's a no, no penalty true. pit stop. And Jack William Miller looks like they did the same thing. That might have saved him. Yes, he gave up six positions on the racetrack, but we had seen uh, two lockups, so he can come in, and if they had another set of Firestones, probably a lightly used one since we had some rain, um, then he's got a chance to still fight. And Kevin, I did misspeak. Kiko Porter is, is at the tail end of the lead lap, not a lap down like James Rowe is. Okay. So James Rowe is our only driver who is not on the lead lap at the moment. Go ahead, DJ. Well, I had a chance to talk to the Able Motorsports camp here, uh, uh, Kevin, and they say Jacob Abel is in full attack mode. They are not waiting for tires. They are not waiting for push to pass. They want this lead, and they want it now. Is the restart by far the best chance? Or can you get someone later as their tires begin to wear? So there are lots of great passing opportunities here at Road America. We've talked about turn one, turn three, turn five, turn eight, turn 12, turn 14, you can sneak one in. So really, you want to make sure it's good and it's clean. Even if you're only a couple tenths quicker, the draft will make up for that. They're all lining up, getting their tires and brakes hot because we are going green this time by. Unlike the initial start, they will these lead drivers will punch off. Jamie Chadwick will punch off at the apex, the middle of turn 14, heading up the front, and she's on the gas. Let's check in. Uh, well, let's wait a minute. Let's watch the restart first before we check into what we're hearing on the 28 radio. She is gone. Jacob Abel chasing about four car lengths behind as we go again from Road America. Quarter of the way through. Further back, popping out. Battle for third as Foster 
We'll try to go around the long way again. Not this time. Bryce Aaron mixing it up back there. Miles Rowe with a stout defense verging on a block. I'm sure race control will look at that movement. A little further back, Josh Pearson. We're told Kiko Porto is getting a drive through for avoidable contact in that incident with James Rowe. Here is Reese Gold, the ticket clinic car at the inside of Callum Hedge in that black car, and then Miles Rowe right behind with Josh Pearson. I think that's the second time they have had a move like that. And then Michael Orlando is going to say, thank you very much. I will come through the inside. And he might have picked up a couple there. That momentum shift with Miles Rowe and Josh Pearson playing some Archie Bargy. Cuban and Michael Orlando said, thank you very much. I'll take those spots. Was that Josh Pearson we heard saying, what is he doing? Yeah, I would not be surprised by that. That's the second time they've come together in similar circumstances in different corners. And Josh Pearson had his best start of his young career. Most of a full season last year. Started third here today. Felt like he was going to have a really good opportunity. Still does, but now he's dropped all that track position. He's back in 13th. Let's go back and... Miles Rowe up the inside here, defending from Josh Pearson. Pearson tries to go around the outside, and Miles Rowe runs all the way off, all the way into the runoff. They lose their traction. Yuvin and Michael D. Orlando. I think Michael D. Orlando picked up three positions in turn five. Yep, because there's one, two, three cars. Thank you very much, Michael D. Orlando. Take those spots. So back up to the front, it's still Jamie Chadwick, Jacob Abel within a couple of car links. Louis Foster, Kyle Collette, Bryce Aaron, and Jack William Miller has gone around. That's at the exit of turn one. He is back rolling on that paved runoff at the moment. He'll be able to stay green for this one. Foster on the hunt, but hasn't really been able to do anything. Oh, we got a big off into turn five. That's Bryce Aaron. No, I'm sorry, that's Jonathan Brown. Jonathan Brown. That broken front wing. In a new wing. Oh. Copy, we see it. And the tire is going to struggle to get all the way around. Looks like that left front was flat as well, Kevin. All right get a replay of this coming down into turn five. Looks like D'Alba defended and he just got a little wrong. Very lucky because we've seen a couple years ago, these Indy next cars, if you get that curb wrong into turn five, you can go for quite, quite the aerial acrobatics. But you can see that flat left front tire and broken front wing with Jonathan Brown here coming. He's all the way back in turn eight. He's got a long ways to go still. Yeah, this is a pain a couple of miles or so. That you know, is us front, though. Yeah, let, let's talk to the car owner of the driver in front, DJ. A man that needs no introduction, Michael Andretti, down here in pit lane. And Michael, we've been watching Jamie put on a heck of a performance this round. Talk to me about her development from her rookie season into this new season. Uh, she did an amazing job over the winter, you know, to get herself stronger. And I think that was her biggest problem last year. And, uh, you know, it's showing on the racetrack. She's been competitive since the first race of the year. Unfortunately, she's had a lot of bad luck, but uh, hopefully now it's all coming together. Well, it looks like it's all coming together. Are you having to coach her here at this point, or is she just out cruising? No, she's she's learned. She, she knows. She knows what she needs to do. She's got a lot of experience. And, you know, if you look at the way she's leading the race right now, she's doing a really good job. Well, she's doing a good job. And we wish you and the rest of the team good luck for the rest of the weekend. All right, thank you. 26-year-old from England has a lot of experience. She is uh, very accustomed to running in this position. Three W Series championships. But this was a big step. And last year, I think she did what was reasonable making that step. Some was expected more of her, especially in, in Europe. But I think people here understood, no, this is a tough task. This is going to be a two-year program. And she is showing the pace this year that warranted her getting this opportunity as Colin has had another off. And one of the things I think people often underestimate is how much it takes to learn all these racetracks. And along with that, 
she was learning new racetracks as well as trying to build the fitness. She admitted she wasn't quite strong enough last year. And everybody I've talked to has been so impressed with the amount of time she spent in the gym getting stronger to be in a position to manhandle, to handle, to like really throw these Indian X cars around. And the fact that on these long road courses, the Indianapolis road course and here at Road America, Niels Colin going off, trying to defend it looked like from James Road, just couldn't quite hold on through the apex, slides wide. And then he is quickly, just a big tank slapper, Crex ends out doing a little bit more landscaping at the exit of, of turn six. Trying for the over under. Just can't quite hold it down the inside of James Row there. You can hear how little traction, especially with all the rain we had yesterday, how slippery that grass is. While it's still fairly comfortable, consistent, two, three, four car lengths. Jamie Chadwick on Jacob Abel, about the same back to Louis Foster. At this point, if you're up front, are you saving tires a little bit and thinking, all right, I want to make sure I have some life if we get another restart? There is some management within the cockpit on these Firestone tires. You're worried about holding the grip. We talked about the carousel. It's a long, punishing corner, not just for the drivers holding the steering wheel, but for that outside front, that outside rear, those left side firestones. Take a beating. Louis Foster with a great run here on Jacob Abel into turn 12. Foster tries around the outside, looks at the over under up to 13. Unfortunately, it's a left hander. It's not going to be able to get it done. So we say they may be saving tires, but if the opportunity presents itself, they're going to send it in there. Top two in the championship there are battling at this point. As they run, Abel 29 points ahead of Foster. You see Siegel and the points that he's losing today. And then they'll have to, some decisions to make because I think there are some potential options. Not only that, he's already set to do another race for Dale Coyne Racing and there are still likely a few available in one of those seats at some point. Uh, but it's still TBD on Augustine Canapino. Uh, there, as we see S Salvador de Alba Jr. slowing. There's been a lot of social media conversation stemming from some on-track incidents, and the team felt like this weekend that the driver is not really prepared to compete, so we're going to give him the weekend off. It's unfortunate that it's come to this but it's best for all was the feeling that Augustine Canapino sit out and be fully ready to go uh, at some point. And he very well might be back in the car with Laguna Seca. Uh, everyone will sit and evaluate and discuss options after this weekend is and with, over. And with a weekend off next weekend for most of these teams, it's a chance to catch your breath after the month of May, Detroit, Road America, evaluate what you want to do going forward for the rest of the season. That two car, Salvador Diablo Jr., I'm not sure was able to make it all the way back to put in. It's still sitting at the bottom of the hill, and there we get our full course yellow. Yellow, turn 14. Coming up right at about the midpoint of this race. Oh, and it, yeah, it did not make it. Just that shy of pit in. But you're not going to make it up that hill if you don't have full power. DJ. Yeah, I just talked to the team of the Grupo Indy folks. They said the dash has shut off for Salvador. Other than that, they're not really sure what happened. The AMR safety team going to work. They have been busy this weekend with all of the incidents uh, within the different series running. We saw a big off in IndyCar qualifying for Joseph Newgarden through the kink yesterday. A couple of big crashes but they will just tow that car into pit lane. It should be pretty short time under yellow here. You talked about saving tires for a restart. This is the moment. This is the chance you've got this time by. There are nine laps to go. We're over halfway. Push to pass and overtake won't be active on the restart until they come around the first time. But it's when you're all stacked up and 
I don't think Jamie Chadwick is going to catch Jacob Abel napping like he did. She did last time. He was he was a little asleep at the switch when she took off for that restart. There has been racing wall to wall, really starting on Thursday, and the USF Championships have been racing here this weekend with I think five different races. And some rain impacted things over the weekend. Pretty simple in USF Pro 2000. Lockie Hughes swept the weekend for Turn 3 Motorsports and now has a nice lead in the championship. And in USF 2000, Sam Corey and Max Taylor. And Max Garcia still has a big lead in the USF 2000 championship. So uh, a lot of action this weekend. You can probably see some highlights on YouTube. Fortunately, Logan Adams is okay after that barrel roll with a crash this morning in the USF Pro 2000 championship and he got into the back of someone in turn 14. That was frightening for a moment. And that's Mark Dismore's grandson, for those that know. Logan Adams is, uh, was having a really nice weekend, so happy to hear that he's okay. Yeah, and there was a couple of big crashes over the course of the weekend. It was uh, it was plenty busy behind Lucky Hughes. He may have swept the weekend at the top of the podium, but there was a lot of other stuff going on. So they're trying to get the car back, plugged in, reset the electronics, maybe change the steering wheel and see if he can get back out and continue. So that'll give us a nice chance to reset as we get into the sack second half of this race. And Jamie Chadwick with an opportunity to make a little bit of history. First, let's hear what the strategy is for Reese Gold, restarting from seventh. Okay, so it's gonna be 10 to go here, halfway through. We're at 113, the Orlando behind 77. Think about what you did on that restart and why you got hosed. That can't happen again, we gotta fix that. To the point. Yeah, yeah, don't do what you did last time. It didn't work. They, those numbers they were giving were the push to pass amounts. It is limited to 150 seconds total. Gives you an extra 50 horsepower boost. And it's not available right away. Jamie Chadwick going early on these restarts. Jacob Abel closer. Female winners, Anna Beatrice, Pippa Mann in Indy Lights. Also, Simona Di Silvestro and Catherine Legg in Atlantics. They won on road courses. No one's won in a road course in Indy Lights or Indy Next. Second half of the race is underway. Green again, and Jacob Abel has a great run. Chadwick defends up the inside, and is gonna get through turn one in front. Foster back in third is being challenged by Kyle Collette. Big wiggle, a little further back. Bryce Aaron in the runoff, gets it gathered back up, picking up momentum. Louis Foster fighting a rear guard here with Kyle Collette and Callum Hedge behind him. Now the run down to turn five. What does Abel have here? What does Collette have for Foster for that third spot? Collette's thinking about the long way around. Callum Hedge, Hedge thinking about sticking his nose and not getting it done. Dear Orlando, you've been Sunder Worthy and Miles Rose still going at it, Pete and Tom. Bryce Aaron doing a nice job running in seventh right there behind this group. Black and white, number 27, Andretti car, side by side. Christian Bogle and Nolan Aller, and Bogle wins that fight. James Rowe trying to recover, coming through. And Niels Colin, who's been on the grass a couple of times, still going. And Jack William Miller, the yellow has set him up to make some spots up. Jordan Missick doing a good job. He's gotten a lot of racing miles here at Road America this weekend. A couple of Radical Cup races plus all of the Indy Next duties. Look at Foster with the dive on Abel into turn 12. Wow. Abel thought he had him covered and Louis said, there's a car with, I'll send it. That was impressive. That wasn't just a straight run of momentum. Give him a little oak doke there, look to the outside, come back to the inside. Yep, Louis Foster defending. Simple, Louis, overtake active. Defend if you need to. Abel has got a run on him. They're almost side by side at the line. Still side by side, heading down to turn one. This is for second. Foster on the inside, Abel on the outside. Foster is going to hang on there and continue to maintain the position. And the one person who is loving seeing them run side by side like this, Jamie Chadwick disappearing up the road out front. Pearson has made some spots back up in that green and white car, back up the 10th. Sunder Morthy, the Wisconsin grad right in front of him. D. Orlando in eighth, Aaron in seventh. It is tight throughout this field. 10 seconds separates top 20 or so. 
Reese Gold and Callum Hedge going side by side. Sunworthy and Pearson. You just don't want to be on the outside. It does not go well. It is not only the longer way around, it has less grip, and it's easy to get pushed off, and you lose all of your momentum. And Miles Rowe and Josh Pearson are nose to tail again. They have spent some time together here today. Jordan Missick still battling on. We saw he had a moment early on, but still very much in the middle of things at 12. That's a nice run for someone just doing a part-time schedule in his first year at this level. Beautiful sights and sounds of these race cars here at Road America. It really is an incredible venue. So many different places to experience. There's just not enough time in a weekend to see it all. There's Niels Colin in the number 33 HMD car that has our on board this weekend. He has been able to move forward five spots. Biggest mover so far. Go, mate. Let's get him. Push that. Push that V-Min in third one. Come on. Let's get him. We can get him. 23-year-old from the Netherlands, who I think has done a nice job this year. This was a big step up this year for Niels with much lower level experience and just a couple of years of car racing after a lot of karting. But he has equipped himself nicely. And he is following James Rowe here. James has a lot of experience in these cars. You see some of these cars weaving, I would say, down the straight. When the car behind them isn't close enough, they're trying to break the draft. Reese Gold looked like burned up, pushed a pass, got past Callum Hedge, despite Callum Hedge defending down into turn five. And then Reese Gold tries to defend back into six and holds the spot. Yeah, this battle is not done yet. Callum Hedge down. has done a nice job in the last few weeks. Coming off a podium at Detroit, has qualified the top ten the last four rounds, also fourth in the first round on the road course at Indianapolis, running sixth right here. And Reese Gold had his second best result of the season at Detroit last weekend in sixth. I would guess Reese feels like this has been just an okay season. So he is one of those that I think we should keep an eye on as we get close to the second half of the season because the potential is there for Reese. We've seen it. He's won races. He's run up front. But it's just so difficult. And, you know, in that circumstance, you've got nine others in the same equipment that you have with HMD and a lot of talent in that tent which means you have a lot of information and data to learn from, but it also means you're racing a lot of very similar cars. If they have a good setup, the best setup for the weekend, you're fighting amongst yourselves for a lot of positions. These front three are starting to step out a little bit. Foster trying to hold off Abel, who is looking for a way around. Inside five to go now, or coming to five to go. Really great turn three there for Jamie Chadwick. Louis Foster maybe missed a little on momentum. Jacob Abel with a great run down here to turn five. Even with Jamie and 18 seconds on Abel. Foster thinks about a look. How much do you lose if you defend? If you take the inside line, how much time are you giving up? You do give up a fair bit of momentum. It shallows your entry. It makes it a lot harder to get the car around the corner. It takes a little more tire life out of those Firestones as well. But if you hold the position, it's one thing to catch a car. It's a whole nother kettle of fish to pass a car. So for Jamie Chadwick, the doing the smart thing, defending just a little bit, knowing she's good through that turn six, seven, eight complex, the carousel. Really good run there, but Louis Foster with momentum coming into the kink here. This could get very interesting down to turn 12. Oh, he is right there. And Foster is trying to go back to back to back. No one's done that since Linus Lundquist a couple of years ago. He starts on pole in the Indy car race this weekend. Not close enough in Canada corner. Chadwick hangs on. Louis Foster with the bit between his teeth when he gets momentum into 13. That is a sketchy place to try a pass. And he loses a lot of momentum, Jacob Abel. They make contact. Any damage for either. Abel's got to run on Foster now. 
Jacob Abel's picking up the draft from Jamie Chadwick. This will help him a lot. I think he's going to clear Go, Louis Foster You're here. Clear. Abel back in the second. We talk about momentum under defending. Whoa, Louis Foster with the big dive down into turn three. Wow. Jamie Chadwick's loving this out front. They're side by side at the exit with the over under. And now Colette is in the mix. That's second and third right there, side by side, into five. Colette waiting to see if they come together and he can scoop through. Foster back into second. Jamie Chadwick with some breathing room. Reese Gold joining this train for second as well. Great respectful racing between these drivers so far today. And Chadwick, the last time by into 10, looked like she was in danger of giving up the lead. Now she's back up by five car lengths, but it's back to the way it was. Louis Foster chasing again. Fastest laps of the race. It's Jacob Abel, a minute 53.2. Then Callum Hedge, a minute 53.4. Reese Gold next, then Louis Foster. And then Kyle Collette, top five fastest laps of the race. Tougher to get that fastest lap when you're leading with no draft help at all. And what we talked about with the draft is these cars punch a big hole in the air. They take a lot of we're energy. on us at the carousel. Four laps to go. So he has 58 Four laps. Lap. Yeah, Jamie concerned about holding on. Your bars. Holding on to that left front tire. The coaching from the timing stand. Think about your bars, and those are the adjustments the drivers have in the cockpit. The anti-roll bars, they change how much the car rolls. And oh, big contact into turn one. Oh, it's Miles Rowe, and it's Jordan missing. Damage for both cars, that's going to bring out a caution. And we're going to be in a hurry up to go green again because there's three and a half laps remaining. What happened to Miles Rowe, who's running, yeah, I think, I got a, a right here. back in 11th or so, Missick in 12th. And this is the first non-productive result that Rowe has had. That's what he's been able to do this year is finish races and score points. Here's what happened. Oh, Miles Rowe gets gets upset or into the three car of Michael D. Orlando, maybe setting up for a pass there. Jordan Missick, just an innocent bystander. Car bounces across the curves. Missick almost gets clear around the outside, tips him into a spin now. Yeah, nothing Missick could do there. Let's see this first one again. So it's D. Orlando in the darker car, and Rowe is behind him and I don't I don't know if Missick Jordan Missick in the 21 might have gotten into the back okay. of the 99 of Miles Row there it's hard to tell from that look I'd, I'd want to see another look to confirm that but he might have pitched the 99 into a spin the 99 might have spun on its own um, D Orlando was very fortunate to get away without any contact from that that all happened right behind him so yeah, that was 9th, 10th, and 11th. And they will red flag this to give us an opportunity to see a green finish. Both drivers are out and okay. We'll look and see if there's any damage to D Orlando's rear of his car. So They'll stop at pit out <laughs> with three to go, and not exactly what. Great job, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Not exactly what Jamie Chadwick wanted because I'm not going to say she had this race under control, but she was controlling it as much as you can. But it's always a new set of circumstances. Not only when you restart, but stop the cars and go again. 
Now, anytime you have a red flag, it can add an element of chaos to this. We've seen in IndyCar where cars won't restart after a red flag. Will Power, a couple years ago on Belle Isle in Detroit, um, it changes it. And then Jamie was concerned about her left front wearing through the carousel. Louis Foster really able to take out a lot of speed through there, carry big momentum, pull a gap on Jacob Abel behind him, close up on Jamie Chadwick ahead. And so with these couple of laps, let these tires cool down. It is a little bit of a reset. I think we're gonna get, probably get a three lap shootout here at the end. Two lap shootout, excuse me. It's three to go at the moment. What about the mental state? You know, if I'm the driver that is looking to win, I don't know if Jamie would consider this the biggest race win she's had. I think a lot of people would. This is the highest level series she's raced in before. And when you're in the moment, you don't have time to think about that. You're doing your job. Now she's got a moment to think about what is available to her. I think she's a pro. She's won multiple W Series championships. She showed this year she can handle the pressure and the challenge. I really think that she's just going to do her job. She knows what the job is, just like Louis Foster, just like Jacob Abel, just like Kyle Collette behind, Reese Gold, all of these drivers. At this level, they have raced in so many different types of cars at so many different venues and events. She knows what her job is. She'll go out, do the exact same thing she's been doing on the restarts, get a good gap, get clear of Louis Foster, hopefully leave him to fend for himself with Jacob Abel, and she can just drive up the road because I believe when they get going here, and if they go green first time by, it will be two laps to go when they see the green flag. What kind of heat in the tires do you have? Assuming we only sit here for a couple of minutes in one out lap, is it normal or do you have to tiptoe a little bit more in the team uh, turn one after red flag situation? With a four mile warm up lap, you get a good opportunity to make sure those Firestones are up to temperature, your brakes are up to temperature. There's a lot of time to make sure it's ready to go. Let's listen to some 28 Jamie Chadwick radio. I believe push to pass will be active on the restart because it's within two to go. So for sure use the button going out of 14 on the restart, whether or not it works, but you gotta try it. Yep. I believe, I believe that is the rule. We've, we've had some confusion in that area <laughs> this year, but yeah, push it and see what happens. Uh, let's hear the 26 team now. We don't have the speed to challenge Jamie. When Abel tries to overtake me, because he will, can Jamie try and give me slipstream if she's far enough ahead? I, that I, is interesting. It'd be interesting to hear what the team thinks about that. And, and that's a fair question. That's a fair comment. Louis Foster doesn't feel he has the pace to go after Jamie, which is a, a very interesting comment and something that I'm sure Jamie's team, now they are teammates, but here in Indy Next by Firestone, teammates may be in name only. Um, they are all working towards their own results. But what Louis is asking for is when he becomes side by side with the 51 car, if Jamie moves over and pulls her slipstream, over to in front of the 26 car, it could help Louie finish 1-2 mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And Andretti, if they said, okay, we want to script this, we want to make sure we finish 1-2, not 1-3 with Jacob Abel in second. And for the championship, Foster is most concerned about Abel. Jamie Chadwick is not in the championship because he said she's had a lot of misfortune despite having fast cars all season long. I also think they're pretty close. Jamie has said that's the teammate that I work together most with, have the best they're both relationship British. with. Yes, so I, I think, you know, I kind of had that in my mind as Foster is trying to make that move 10, 11, and 12 that he wants to really make it a clean pass in that situation. DJ, tell us what else you know. Well, I've had a chance to catch up with the Abel Motorsports camp here, Kevin, and uh, I'll tell you what, they're feeling pretty confident. When I asked them what the mindset of Jacob Abel was, they said, well, he's fixing to go out and win this race. They feel confident, they feel ready to go, and with these two laps, watch out for that number 51. It's going to be good. An out lap, and then about 8.1 miles to decide 
if we're going to see something we really have not seen before, a female winning on a road course in Indy next. It's kind of an asterisk there because I would consider uh, the Atlantic series back in the day a very high level series when Catherine Legg and Simona De Silvestro won. But if you want to speak technically, Indy Lights, Indy next, no female has won on a road or a street course. We've had oval winners. Anna Beatrice, Pippa Mann was the last. I think it was Kentucky in 2010. It was the last time a lady won in this series. So it's been a little while. It's been a decade and a half, and Jamie Chadwick is in that position today. And she is going to be just over eight miles from getting it done. Her teammate from behind, who most of us thought was going to be the fastest today, has essentially conceded. At least is he playing on games? his radio. Is he playing games? <laughs> At least on his radio to his team, he doesn't. Yeah. He told them he doesn't feel he has the pace for the race right. Jacob Abel thinks he does. And he's certainly thinking championship and leads it right now. Points as they run by 19 on Louis Foster. So that's a big position. Therefore, second and third. Kyle Collette. Running in fourth in this race is still very much in the championship mix. And Foster has said, that's who I'm really concerned about. I talked with him on Friday, and he said, I think he is going to start to figure this out in the second half of the season. What Kyle Collette has not done is oval racing, and we've got a lot of that coming up. There is a lot of ovals to finish out the schedule here in Indy next. A couple of more road courses with WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, Mid-Ohio, Portland. But you have ovals, short ovals at Iowa, Milwaukee, Nashville. There's still a lot of racing less left to go in this championship. Well done by IndyCar, Indy Next Race officials to red flag this one so we can see it have a chance. There's no guarantee. We need to stay clean and green for two more laps, but at least have a chance to see this one finish under green. Will it be Chadwick? getting her first win in North America in Indy Next. Or Louis Foster or Jacob Abel. Kyle Collette is lurking. Good days for Gold Hedge, Aaron. Son of Worthy in front of a lot of friends and family. Great day running in eighth right now. And Michael D. Orlando trying to keep the momentum going also in the top 10. Much closer on this restart for Louis Foster with green, Jamie Chadwick. Green, green. The green flag comes out. Here we go. They're on it as they head up the hill. There will be two laps remaining when they hit the line. Just over eight miles to go to the side. Indy next from Road Good America. Chadwick by two car lengths. Foster doesn't have anything for her right now. Abel doesn't have a move on Foster. The battle is further back. Hedge and Aarons side by side through one. Reese Gold got a pass done on Kyle Collette. He's looking to take it back. Yuvin's under more the inside Bryce Aaron into turn three with Callum Hedge ahead. It is so tight. Aaron trying to hang on. Jacob Abel with great momentum down into turn five. Is he going to be able to do anything with Louis Foster? Reese Gold got Kyle Collette. Gold in that yellow or gold car is up into fourth. Chadwick still in front. Foster, Abel, Gold, Collette, Hedge, Sonamore, the and Aaron. Here comes Josh Pearson up the hill on Bryce Aaron into turn six. Josh Pearson moves forward. He's in eighth. That's the green and white car. Aaron and D. Orlando, the top 10. Nolan Aller in 11th position. That's a good run for him. Christian Bogle with the late lunge. Big move on Nolan Aller. Slides off and Kiko Porto trying to take advantage. Don't think he could quite hang on to that. Kiko Porto up to 12th. Did three races last year for Cape. He's won championships in the level. He's really, really good. He's been doing great in Super Trofeo Lamborghini this year. And a quick call up is a tough task for him. But a chance maybe to get inside the top 10. Turn 10. Foster has nothing right now for Jamie Chadwick. Jacob Abel with a great run there through turn 12. Coming up the hill to start what will be the last lap and you can guarantee these drivers will be holding that push to pass button down for these last four miles of racing the gap is expanding it's three four maybe five car lengths plus jamie chadwick trying to get it done abel thinking about second he's not close enough gold is in fourth colette hedge pearson son of worthy Aaron and D. Orlando, the top 10, less than a lap to go. 
Two more big passing zones. One of them is coming up here. No one's got anything for Jamie Chadwick. What a great try. behind. Louis Foster's maybe got one more shot at this with only 11 seconds of overtake left. It seems to be simply hitting your marks now. That's what Jamie Chadwick has in front of her. With three W Series championships, she is used to clear track, clean air, hitting her marks. And half out of 10, out of the carousel. Getting a little extra coaching from the team on when to use push to pass here. Bring this one home. Jamie Chadwick had a breakthrough early this season with a podium at Indianapolis. She has been fast throughout the year, but some bad luck, a couple of mistakes have kept her from getting the results that she felt that she deserved. But she has shown in year two that the pace is there, the strength is there. And the reason why there was so much effort to get her to America, to get her on the IndyCar ladder, it is deserved. Turn 10, done and dusted. Jamie Chadwick, plus five, plus six car lengths. Up the hill. Foster trying to hang on to score big points in the championship on Jacob Abel. Push to pass here to the line. Up the hill. Final run to the line. Jamie Chadwick is an Indy Next winner. The first female to win in 15 years. Yes, yes, yes. And the run for second was separated by two hundredths of a second. Jacob Abel had a great run out of that last corner. Excellent job today. Congratulations. That was impressive. No word. So proud of him. Great job. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so, so much. Yes. And this is when it's worth it. All those cold mornings in the winter in the gym, all those hours when you don't want to get out of bed because it, everything hurts to get back to the gym and train, this is when it pays off. And there was not attrition from front runners in this race. This wasn't circumstances. She was faster. This was a she beat down. She held off championship contenders. Sorry so much. You guys, oh, you made this happen. Thank you so much. And I think it is very telling that every single driver on that track has come by to congratulate her on her first, and I would wager not her last, Indy Next race win. Breaking through to win at this level is massive. You do not luck your way into a win like this. No, you, not you, at this level. You have talents to be able to win at this level. Jamie Chadwick clearly has it. This is the run for second to the line. Look at this, Louis Foster on the outside by a foot or so? No, about two, three feet. Yep. I would say about uh, 0 0.024 of a second there. Wow. That was very close, but. And that's big in the championship too. That would have been, I think about a six point swing the other direction. Yeah, for so, Jacob Abel, yeah. who still comes out with the lead at 19 on Foster. And winning here at Road America is special. It is a beautiful racetrack. They don't call it the National Park of Speed for no reason. It is a park with an over four mile incredible racetrack on it. So winning here is something that Jamie will always cherish to get her first Indy Next win here at Road America. Well, this is gonna be a fun victory lane conversation with Jamie Chadwick. I've touched on this a couple of times. I think a lot of us feel like the reaction from people back home um, wasn't really fair to Jamie Chadwick. I, I don't know that everyone in the UK and in Europe understood the level that she was racing at. Um, and I get it, you know, you're in the Formula One world, uh, but they're good.
They're really good over here. And this is a higher level. It's a faster car, more powerful car, no power steering. So there was a lot for her to learn. Brand new tracks. Most of these other drivers have come up the ladder. And for a lot of these drivers in this race, this is maybe the 12th race they've had at this track this weekend. And the interesting thing about Road America, with four miles, you don't get many laps in a weekend. So you don't see those corners very often because we see Michael Andretti cheering Jamie Chadwick into victory circle. A lot of people have helped Jamie Chadwick get to this part. This is not a family-funded operation. DHL, Vexed, some of the Andretti partners have made this work because they saw potential in this young woman. And she is starting to fulfill that. Job's not done yet, but a major step today. Jamie Chadwick set to climb out as an Indy Next race winner. Down here in victory circle with the first time winner in the Indy Next Series, Jamie Chadwick climbs out of the car here at this point. Big fist into the air. Ah, oh, big thump of the chest there as she climbs out to get some high fives and some hugs from the team. Well deserved all the way around. Got to thank everybody here that makes this possible for Jamie Chadwick. But an absolutely fantastic drive here today for the driver of the number 28. There it is, some more hugs from the team. Everybody that makes this possible, but there was only one person behind the wheel of the car. Jamie Chadwick, your first win in Indy Next. Talk to me about how you're feeling and how you withstood that pressure. Oh man, I have no words. Um, honestly, a bit emotional, I think. Yeah, we, uh, yeah we, uh, we've had an unbelievable car this year and just haven't been able to really do anything about it. So I'm just so happy uh, we held on there. With the red flag at the end, I was like, oh, come on. We started to lose the tires a little bit. Louis had a look and I just knew I had to be aggressive. Uh, I know they have a championship to worry about and I just had to get my head down. I really wanted to win today and I'm just so thankful for the Andretti guys, honestly. Last year was a tough year, but they've helped me so much and oh, this is to them, thank you. You are more than welcome. Jamie Chadwick, a first time winner in the Indy Next Series. A really impressive drive, really impressive. He's Hunter McElray, teammate last year with Andretti Global. Here are the unofficial results. This was a fun one. I wonder what happened to Michael D. Orlando sliding back to 11th after that restart. He was up in ninth, lost a couple of spots at, on that restart, but a great job. Louis Foster chased Jamie Chadwick all the way home. Jacob Abel just a couple feet short of second. Kiko Porto in an opportunity, right place, right time. Gets a, a 12th place result here today, and some others unfortunately did not get to finish. All right, let's hear from the runner up now who had a fantastic finish of his own. Louis Foster is with DJ. P2 here on the day. Louis in your championship continues to stay alive. He continued to cut in on that gap with Jacob Abel. But talk me through the race and talk me through those last couple of laps. Yeah, so obviously, like I said, firstly, massive congratulations to Jamie. You know, she's done an amazing job. You can hear everyone cheering for her. So, yeah, she was the, she was a woman to beat this weekend. Really, really fast. And uh, so I'm more than happy for the team. You know, one, two, can't ask for anything more. Uh, from our side of things, went for a move at turn one that we thought I thought might stick, but didn't. So that really hindered our ability to get back forward again. I had to use push pass. And we were, we were good on push pass until, like, probably lap 10. Like, we had, like, 30 seconds more than everyone else around us. And then... I think I just burned a bit too much in the middle stage of that race, and we went to the end of the last like two laps with a lot less, so it was all about surviving. Um, but it was a good move on Jacob, so I was happy about that move. Uh, barely stuck it, but um, yeah, and then just as the line, just managed to get P2, so I'm happy about that. So yeah, obviously closing on the gap on Jacob, Jamie got a win, good day for Andretti. Good day indeed. There you go, Louis. Thank you. And one, two for Andretti Global. And championship still very much in play for several, and this is how the points look at this point. With a big TBD right there in fourth for Nolan Siegel. We might see him at Laguna Seca. Uh, we don't know. He does slide a little further back. Reese Gold and Callum Hedge tied there in fifth. Um, but still a lot of races left to go. Jamie Chadwick, that win today, those 50-some-odd three points, 
launching her four spots further up into the top 10. She had a lot of bad luck at the beginning of the year, and now it's a continuing fight back for her. Let's hear from the championship leader. It is Jacob Abel that is still man able to hand and maintain that championship lead here at Road America. And Jacob, that had to be a little bit tough, that close of a finish at the line. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was it was a good battle. First of all, you know, big congrats to Jamie. You know, she's been working hard for this for a while, and she drove a, a good race there up front. Um, yeah, we were really fast. I think we were the fastest car on track for sure. Um, you know, just had a, had a tough time getting around these guys, and uh, yeah, a little bit of contact here and there, a couple you know questionable things in terms of moving under braking and, and all of that. But yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, we'll move forward. We still got a good good finish here in third, and uh, still hold the championship lead. We just you know really want to get back up on that top step, and we're gonna keep pushing to do that. Yeah. Going to keep pushing to do it, and I've got a sneaking suspicion it'll come sooner rather than later. Yeah. Thank you. Championship is the focus right now for Jacob Abel. He's already got race wins. This season has broken through, and we are in for a good fight to the finish. And look at the crowd gathered at Victory Lane. This is one of the special attributes. There's so much access at this place, and they are going to enjoy something very unique. First time winner since 2010 for a female in Indy Next. And it's Jamie Chadwick today. Charlie, that was fun. A drive of the day for Jamie Chadwick when the hard work of the winner pays off with a victory. We got a double header coming up next. We'll do it two times at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. One weekend off, then it is June 22nd and 23rd. And don't forget, IndyCar on NBC, 3.30 Eastern this afternoon. Hope you can join us.